hi everyone it is ellen jaffe jones and in the lurking background is helene with triangle veg fest who has given me this great opportunity to talk to you about how to eat vegan on a budget so i'm hoping that you all can hear me and as we go along here i'm going to say a few times if you've got questions i love questions just drop them in the chat box and i'll keep uh an eye out for them and see what we can see. So I don't know about you. Have you been to the grocery store lately? Oh, MG, is it the Wild West out there? Uh, check out the meat department if you can find meat, because the last time I went to Walmart, which was to update my slideshow for the Columbia Veg Fest, which Helene kindly invited me to. How many of you went there? Raise your hand. Say hello. Say hi. Um, Susan, good to see you. I actually, somebody I actually know who I met at the Columbia Veg Fest. And uh, check out her work. Google her. She's awesome. And um, it, it was kind of crazy just taking pictures at Walmart of the cost of food. And that's really what I focused on because. I have been tracking this for a lot of years and it's just been so nuts. And people are saying, oh, you know, you really can't eat vegan on $4 a day. Of course, when I wear this shirt, like to races, because that's what all this is, I've placed in as of yesterday, 255 5K or longer races for my age group. People will stare at my shirt and go, yeah, right. You can't eat on, uh, on a on budget for four dollars a day and it's like you absolutely can and the way i did this was i crunched the numbers in every single recipe here based on ingredients you can find at walmart the book was published initially in 2011 and people are saying oh it can't be right anymore the prices have gone way up well yes in some things but mostly meat and dairy and so what i've done for my presentations is actually take pictures of these these um, ingredients that I use for the cookbook and the recipes. And I have also taken pictures of the vegan ingredients. So mainly this is the key to eating vegan on $4 a day. As you can see, I even did the math right on the bag there. So at the time I was researching this, the whole bag was $1.84. There's 32 ounces in this bag. So you divide $1.84 by, by, uh, by 32 ounces and you come up with 0 0.57 ounces or 0 0.57 cents per ounce. So that's the cost of dried beans. And the same really applies for rice. Um, and it's amazing how you would think that these ingredients have gone up, but they really haven't. Somebody, a monk actually stood up uh, at one of my talks about 10 years ago and he said, I buy for the monastery and I'm telling you the price of beans hasn't gone up in 30 years. But we are talking dry beans and people say, oh, I don't have time to cook from scratch. And I go, oh, you don't have time for cancer, diabetes, and heart disease, all of which I've had the wonderful opportunity to see in my life. I was the youngest in my family, and I, uh, by a long shot, um, my sisters were nine and 11 years older than me, and there was so much breast cancer in our family that we were part of the breast cancer gene studies. My mom, aunt, and both sisters had it. I was the only adult female without it. And they all had heart disease and diabetes um, on both sides of the family. So it really was kind of a crazy, crazy uh, experience to go through. And all my life, as a, especially as a TV reporter, I'm figuring out how do I avoid all of this, this insanity. And you know, that's really what led me to eating vegan well before I was married, 41 years ago, actually. And nobody was really using the V word then. It's just I befriended a woman who worked at a health food store and she was also a runner and we started running together in St. Louis. And it was just uh, an amazing transition and epiphany. And you know, at first I went macrobiotic, then I went vegetarian, then vegan. And a lot of women my age, I will be 70, in just a few months, that's the trajectory that we went. And when I was 
married and pregnant. I had some OBs who were very well respected, but they said, you know, you're going to cause your unborn child brain damage if you don't consume enough protein in the form of whey powder. So I remember using these big canisters of whey powder when I was pregnant. And even though, because I knew that breastfeeding was preventative in not only um, the mother who breastfeeds, but in female offspring, you know, it just wasn't making sense to me that once a baby is theoretically weaned that you go to drinking another species milk. But those were the times in La Leche League, which is still considered a very credible organization, though I have not checked out the recent cookbooks, but all their cookbooks then had a whole lot of meat and dairy recipe, dairy in particular recipes in there. So we've learned so much. If you all have questions, please feel free to jump them uh, down in the chat. I'll be watching for questions and feel free to ask me any questions you want about how you do this. And it's just, it's not rocket science. Um, it's interesting. I'm doing another uh this uh, virtual platform class tonight for eight weeks and our topic is going to be fiber and i'm kind of fascinated i've always been fascinated because i almost died of a colon blockage when i was 28 they rushed me to the emergency room and doctors said oh we've never seen a blockage so large and somebody so young and you're going to need to be on medication the rest of your life so that's when i ran to the health food store and read all five books on fiber most of them written by a guy named dennis burkett who a number of the vegan doctors have referred to as their first primer on, on uh, we didn't call it vegan back then, but it was high fiber eating. And, you know, things just kind of come around and yet we have this uh, new young doctor who's writing this book, the fiber fueled cookbook. And this is a very, very thick book with lots of great pictures. And it looks very interesting. Will Bosowitz, uh, a doctor um, and, you know, it, it's just interesting to see how, you know, women my age just didn't become doctors at all. We were told that it was complicated. You had to know math and science. And so, you know, the only choices for me as an elective in high school was like home economics and, you know, science and math just weren't really encouraged. In fact, it was discouraged. So, you know, you're left with people like me who have just this passion for health and really trying to show the world that you can do this, you know, you don't have to have necessarily a medical degree. Of course, I can't, as, even as a certified personal trainer and a running coach, I can't diagnose specific conditions like doctors can, but doctors in our culture certainly have more credibility. And the idea that we are seeing still yet brand new spanking books with no nutrition information by the recipes, uh, interestingly, because people always ask me, do you have nutrition information in Eat Vegan? And the reason we don't, first of all, was my first book and my publisher wanted to make sure it would work and sell, which it did. It quickly became their very um, bestseller. And so what we do uh, in the white space where you might have nutrition information is we actually put the cost per serving. So this lemony dressing, 25 cents a serving. What I did is I ran to Walmart and I used Walmart as a basis because I felt it was really important to show that uh, everybody has access to cheap food because you know you always hear about food deserts and not disagreeing that those don't exist, but um, pretty much people are within some kind of travel distance to a Walmart. And you know, this is where I got the big bag of beans and they actually keep these prices consistent if you can find them. The 20 pound bag of beans is exactly the same price. It's a nickel an ounce and let's do the math because I love to do math. So for an ounce, that's two ounces dry, that would be cooking into four ounces cooked. So that's a serving, four ounces. So it's a dime a serving for uh, serving of beans. And pretty much the same is the case for, for rice as well. So, you know, you got your beans and your rice and it's as good a serving of protein as you'll ever find. And it's really important to understand, you know, people like Dr. Brooke Goldner, she's got a new video up about like, don't worry about the protein. There's protein in everything. There's, there's a gram of protein in a banana. And I had three of them yesterday after the 5k that I placed in. So you know, we get, vegans, we got plenty of protein. And when was the last time you visited the protein deficiency wing of the hospital? So, you know, some people say, Ooh, are you promoting Walmart? And I'm going, Ooh, if you're living below the poverty level for a family of four, roughly $23,000 in the U S uh, a year for income, 
then you're already shopping at Walmart. So again, I just want not to, to have anybody be able to use an excuse. Um, it's elitist to eat vegan. It's expensive to eat vegan. And I can't find a place with cheap prices near me. Yes, you absolutely can. So, you know, the part of this, like uh, the reason I put so many dressing recipes in this book is because we need to be able to eat our salads and our greens and you got to have something nice to make the medicine go down. Uh, as much as I stuff greens and I do this into my Vitamix because that's just the only blender I've ever had over the years that doesn't break down or a blend tech. Um, but, and I, and I don't get anything for recommending either, but you know, when I was a, a cooking instructor for the cancer project, um, which is now called food for life, you know, we were actually given a Vitamix to process the, the beans to make hummus. Because when you're making hummus for 40 people in a cooking class, you need something really powerful. And this, by the way, I was just digging this out for my fiber class tonight. <laughs> of course, the dog really liked the book too, chewed the end of it. But this is the original Cancer Survivors uh, handbook that we used in our Cancer Project cooking classes. And it was an amazing amazing experience. But, you know, the prices just haven't changed since I was buying the ingredients back in the day. And that was in like 2006, 2007, when those classes were going on. So if you have any questions, uh, anything about me, like how do you run on a vegan diet, which other people have seen the shirt at races and go like, you can't race on a vegan diet. Um, just feel free to throw them down below. Other tips, um, you know, eating in season, that's sort of a trick of the macrobiotic diet, although not always possible, but certainly prices are going to be cheaper when you eat according to your season, according to um, your latitude, if you don't have to pay for shipping. And there are other things that you can do. Um, look high, look low. Don't look at eye level because the manufacturers pay to capture your attention. They know that um, people like to impulse buy. So when you're looking at eye level, that's something that you might grab at as opposed to taking the time to look up and look down. Also buying off brands, not the manufacturer's brands, still can be cheaper. Joining a CSA, you know, for most of us in the US, we are in the summer, getting there, uh, summer season and um, so you can find, you can go to a website called localharvest.org and find a co-op or a uh, farm, a community supported agriculture farm. And you know, I'd be interested to know if anybody watching, um, oh, we see all these comments now. Okay, thank you. Uh, that pop, that just, everything populated. So thank you, Helene. I assume you are putting those up. Um, we're seeing about five different, they're all saying localharvest.org uh, to the different Facebook pages. So that's very cool. So yes, you go there and you just enter your zip code or click on the map of your state and it'll show you the nearest co-op or CSA near you. What's a CSA? You pay a membership fee for roughly uh, a period of four or five months as long as the harvest season is functioning. And it's like a subscription and every week you go to a drop off point or to the farm, depending what they have set up. And they have this amazing um, selection of vegetables. Now, it may, not something, it may not be something that you would go or pick out at your grocery store, but most likely they will have recipes or online access to recipes that you can uh, learn how to cook these vegetables if you've never heard of kohlrabi or don't have a clue what to do with it. So there are all these different ways that you can kind of cheap out. And if you belong to a CSA, you can get what's called a work share. And that will often be a lot uh, less money uh, or greatly discounted produce that you have access to. And in some cases, even free produce and it will also be most likely organic. I know the CSA, one of the CSAs I belong to, and I've belonged to them since oh, my kids were knee high to, grass, to grasshoppers, which was about 30 years ago. Uh, they will be organic uh, in, in the kinds of seeds they get. And if you volunteer there, you can see where they're getting their seeds from. Uh, they may not be paying for the organic certification, but their practices often are that way. So uh, again, if you have any questions about how to eat vegan on $4 a day, please do feel free to uh, chat them below. Or if you're watching this on a replay, 
um, you know, you can certainly message me. So for those of you who may not know, um, Eat Vegan was my very first baby. And because it did so well with my publisher, we wrote a whole bunch more and I'll just share these with you. They are on Amazon and feel free to run over to Amazon and get them. My publisher promises me that if Eat Vegan gets to a certain level, we will come out with another edition. Although again, the prices are still very current. Um, maybe with the vegetables and the fruit, a little bit more, but it still is very doable. At least you will find that um, these are the cheapest vegan recipes on the planet. So kitchen divided when you live with somebody who doesn't eat the same way you do. And then, cause I was a high school coach for girls cross country and track. I was starting to hear about this paleo uh, fad and just wrote my interpretation of the paleo diet as I was wearing my vegan hat. And some of the reviews on Amazon said, how dare you use these two words in the same sentence, let alone the same title. But uh, you know, it's totally, um, and National Geographic came out with a cover story about a year after this called The Real Paleo Diet, and they said we were way more gatherers than we were hunters, and the success rate of hunters was only about maybe twice a month, and that was back then with real primitive arrowheads and the kinds of toys. Uh, and, um, sorry, the dog just got into some mayhem. Oh, no, it's the cat. The cat is catching something, as it is wont to do. Okay, anyway, um, so that's paleo vegan. And they said, as I did in here, although they didn't quote me by attribution, but a year later saying, what I did is that the planet can't sustain a diet based around meat and dairy. And then book number four, paleo, uh, vegan fitness. Yeah, it came out of the paleo thing, which by the way, as I started reading the meat-based paleo books, because I forced myself to do that before I could write my own vegan interpretation of paleo, um, it's just like Atkins and the zone diet and South beach and all of these high protein diets now keto, you know, a little tweaking here. Okay. Keto will make it higher in fat, but it's still high protein still for most of us, not great for the heart. All right. So I started running and, you know, was doing all this stuff. And these are not just finishers medals. These are placing in my age group, which is usually the top three in my five year age group. Um, people said, well, like, why don't you come out with how you've done this? How how have you managed to keep running and your knees are fine? So that's what this is all about. But it's also focused on different sports like like fitness, um, yoga, swimming, cycling, and how to get into a program easily and safely enough so you don't burn out. As a high school coach, believe me, I saw these kids. Oh, I love running. I want to do it all the time on asphalt concrete, not uh, an invention designed with the human body in mind. In fact, asphalt and concrete only been around about 100 years. So it can really uh, mess with your skeletal system. So it's important to come up with training programs where you don't get the a case of the terrible twos too much too soon. So that was vegan fitness. And then the uh, fifth book, Vegan Sex, I co-authored with Joel Kahn. Uh, he's a cardiologist. What's good for the heart is good for other parts. I wrote about the experiential part of it, which was having partners who were not vegan. And we were always told, oh, erectile dysfunction is just a normal part of the aging process. Take the pill, your eyes turn orange. Oh, well, it works. Um, so by knowing how to deal with this in, in so many different um, phases of uh, of your life because ED is the leading indicator of heart disease by as much as 30 years. So you can see how changing your diet can really avoid some of these conditions that are supposedly just a part of the aging process. They're not. And if you have been, as I was just so uh, unfortunate not to have any vegan partners and therefore not to have much sex, um, it was just a real eye opener once, you know, my, I was with a partner who was vegan, how different it was. So we have to recruit more men. And then if that doesn't work out, uh, my last book, as I like to joke, is Vegan for One. These are single serving, mostly maybe a couple recipes for two. Uh, we waste so much food in our country and it goes to waste. And so... Uh, all of the recipes there are not only single servings, but we also try to avoid mono eating. So um, we get enough nutrition because often if we're just by ourselves, we're just popping a can of green beans or hominy or um, eating a block of tofu. And so we want to make sure that you get enough nutrients and can spread it over 
a period of time uh, where you are eating enough variety and basically you're eating your vitamins and minerals. And you can't do that if you're just eating a can of green beans for lunch and calling it a day. So the idea is that the foods, whatever you make, will stay for a few days and you can kind of eat off of that and have the variety that um, you might enjoy if you were serving multiple people and able to in incorporate more food and use it efficiently. So that's kind of the wrap up on my work and eating on a budget. I have lots more tips in the books. And of course, um, each of my cookbooks has a hundred different recipes, no overlap between, so you won't get the same recipes in each book. They're very specific to each topic. Um, if you have questions, you can always find me on my website, vegcoach.com. And uh, I'm always happy to do, I do a lot of virtual talks for different groups and even cooking classes if we have the time and inclination. And, you know, I just, as, as the world seems like it's becoming more crazy, I think we need more vegans out there with the sense of compassion and, and um, how we do that maybe through the bucket book through the wallet. You know, I, I've had people come up to me at my table and say, I don't know about vegan, but you had me at $4 a day. So however we reach people, whether it's through fitness, whether it's through trying to incorporate more people, just tasting and testing the kinds of foods that we make to avoid whatever disease they might want to avoid. We've got to reach more people. So that is it from me. And I hope, um, again, if you have any questions that maybe you didn't want to ask here, please feel free to reach out. I'm a certified running coach, personal trainer, and lover of all species. <laughs> and um, I'm happy to address any issue you might have. So thank you so much for watching. And uh, we will see you again soon, I hope. All right, everyone, got to run.